A trucky teenager breaks her silence. Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in s- sort of true crime. After Kylie disappeared on the first Saturday in August, Truckee and Teho was a distressed community. That word, distress, isn't my word. It's the word of a Truckee teenager who broke her silence a few days ago in a local publication, Moonshine Inc. I'll put a link to that entire article in the description. Please read it. It's also an obvious word. Obviously, the community was distressed. And then social media came along. Until now, we haven't known what it felt like to be on the other side of social media. In other words, from some of those seniors and teenagers in Truckee, what did it feel like to be them? We know what Kylie's mother said about social media at her daughter's funeral. But this is the first time a teen has come forward to tell her story. And Kelly Ross starts her story titled Fact or Fiction with these words. My sense of anxiety grew. Distress, anxiety, they're not just words. They refer to feelings of sorrow, pain, suffering, anguish, aching and affliction. What social media did over the past two months was add torment to all of that. How? I'm going to tell you a story that you already know, but before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do like, share, and I'm going to say that again. If you find the content specifically in this video worth sharing, please do share. And I'm going to make that request again at the end of this video. And let's get started. On August 5th, going into August 6th, the night that Kylie disappeared, Kelly Ross, a teenager from Truckee, and a student at the Teho Expedition Academy had been attending a party an hour away in Nevada. 23 days, more than three weeks later, a country singer found Kelly's photo and claimed Kelly Ross, who is blonde and went to a party that same night, was Kylie Rodney. The singer claimed Kylie wasn't real and thus her life and death weren't real either. That video attracted almost a quarter of a million views, before the singer conceded a month later, on September 23rd, that Kylie did exist. This is the nature of social media now, of course. Shock and awe, make crazy statements, uh, misconstrue facts to create salacious fiction, and then walk back or move on a lot later after making your cash grab at everyone's expense. But we already know that side of the story. The story we don't know is what it was like to be Kelly Ross with all of this going on. And the reason we don't know is because her parents told her, warned her, and this is a quote from the article, don't accept anyone's requests on any social media platform. Kelly also writes, quote, I got a lecture from my mom on how nothing on the internet is private, and this is why we have to be careful. Note those words, we have to be careful. Even if you're innocent, we have to be careful. Our family's privacy matters, your privacy matters. We want to take care of our daughter. We don't want um, the social media vultures to ruin your life or um, impinge on your life or your privacy. Be careful. Now, obviously, in a situation like this, Teenagers that were associated with the party, and even those who weren't, were warned not to say anything to social media. I made that warning myself. Teenagers, talk about what happened. Tell your stories to one another. Um, Go to law enforcement, tell them. But don't go onto any YouTube channel because you will get slaughtered. And then one of them did, and that is exactly what happened. I actually tried to intervene in some of those witch hunts only to be accused of misogyny myself and have my own channel sanctioned. So yes, obviously they were warned not to say anything to social media. They weren't warned by accomplices or abductors or murderers or drug dealers, but by their own parents and friends. And I would have given them the same advice. 
and they were right not to. They were right not to engage with social media. That should be the lesson of this this case. Did they speak to law enforcement? Kelly said they did. Did they have to speak to their bosses and Homeland Security? Kelly says she did. But because they didn't speak to social media, and I think that was a wise choice, social media took that to mean something was awry. Social media smelled a rat. Social media saw red flags. Why aren't these teenagers saying anything? Why are they keeping secrets? And so this is another quote from the article. Kelly writes, I got hundreds of comments on Instagram and messages through Facebook from people either warning me or praising what the country singer had said. My friend who was in the photo with me, the one whom the singer claimed was Kylie, was also being flooded with messages. Social media slyly pressured several teenagers by falsely accusing them in public, hoping to draw them out, hoping to get them to indignantly say, well, that's not true, but that is the way that they get their interview. To their credit, they didn't rise to this gambit, but this caused social media to become more rabid and desperate and also allowed one side of the story to emerge virtually unopposed, the foul play theory. So in a situation where people remain silent, it allows another cacophony, however unreasonable, to go unopposed. Well, obviously now one of those teenagers has broken her silence. And this is what she says, and you get a sense of what she was going through. She says, quote, I was overwhelmed and scared. People started asking if I could be a part of their YouTube videos to let them know my side of the story. I felt like I couldn't be a part of that. I didn't know Kylie personally, and it was wrong sharing a side of a story that came from a conspiracy theory. This wasn't about me, end quote. Do you see how it works? Make false accusations, create indignation, then invite the victim onto your channel to clear the air. And of course, you've created the false, muddy, smoky air in the first place that they're supposed to clear. And then what happens? You get your exclusive. In other words, you use nefarious means to get a story. Let's look at those words again. She says, quote, It was wrong sharing a side of a story that came from a conspiracy theory. This wasn't about me. End quote. So what she's really saying there is it's wrong really to add to the circus something that is really irrelevant. Uh, in other words, her being Kylie or her not being Kylie is a non-story. It's sort of non-content dressed up as content. It is wrong. And what you're seeing is true crime becoming all about themselves. The makers of the conspiracy theories becoming these uber entertainers ostensibly they're searching for the truth that's what they'll tell you they are doing but they are the stars of their fake shows what should be a search for a missing person what should be an investigation becomes a distraction and a circus and if you say no no no, it wasn't in the kylie rodney case isn't that what it turned out to be it begins to draw resources away from truth and justice and ironically by the time awp came on the scene Ali was actually doing sweeps for sex offenders, likely because the social media farce had started infecting them as well. So it does create pressure, unnecessary pressure, and it starts distorting the natural uh, lanes of that an investigation needs to take. I think the legacy of the Kylie Rodney case is actually a positive one, a vital, valuable learning experience for especially impressionable youngsters on the dangers, and let's face it, the evil inherent in social media. Kelly Ross goes on to say, quote, I'll never post again without thinking about what the photo could lead to, how it could be misconstrued, or how it might look out of context. In the end, it didn't matter to the internet that I wasn't even there, end quote. Yes, it doesn't matter. If you didn't know anything about the Kylie Rodney case, you could do worse than simply highlighting keywords in this article by Kelly Ross. Misconstrued, out of context, 
claims guilt, shame, overwhelmed, scared, powerless, exposed. Kelly writes, quote, I couldn't believe one photo could get so misconstrued and land me in a missing person investigation. I felt guilty. All these people thought I had been there. I hadn't. They thought I could help. I couldn't. I felt powerless and exposed. A text from my boss appeared. A sheriff's deputy had reached out to her asking me to call him. I called and told the deputy that I hadn't been at the party. End quote. So there are other words to take note of as well. Harassment. Danger. Posting ridiculous videos. Those are her words. Posting ridiculous videos. Discovery of Kylie didn't slow him down. Kelly goes on to write, He found the picture of my friends and me from the night of Kylie's disappearance, and somehow he found the version without blurred faces, and is claiming that my friend Laurel is Kylie propped up dead. I said this shaking on the last word. I was mortified. I didn't know what to do. This will all blow over, Mom said. He doesn't know what he's talking about. In the meantime, don't accept anyone's request on any social media platform. The constant shame I felt was ignited by people who never knew her. They found my past Moonshine Inc. opinion piece. They claimed I was Kylie. What I went through was nothing compared to the harassment that Kylie's friend Sammy Smith, Kylie's family and her other friends went through. Many of them left social media completely in order to escape the harassment and conjecture. While the disappearance of Kylie showed us the power and compassion of the Teho community, it also showed us the power and danger of the internet. End quote. Is it any wonder that Kelly, one of many, says she felt distress, anxiety, constant shame, guilt, powerless, helpless, and overwhelmed, given what she was put through? In her article, I must say, it seems like she actually lives in Teho rather than Truckee, but in her article, Kelly Rosks asks, fact or fiction? Well, in terms of her story, we know all too well that Kelly wasn't part of some fictitious Kylie Rodney conspiracy. So the answer is fiction. Fact or fiction? Answer, fiction. The answer is that social media in the true crime space played mind games with her photo for money. What do you think about the same question regarding Kylie Rodney? Kylie Rodney, fact or fiction? The locals know, Kylie's family know, Kylie's friends know, law enforcement knows. What about social media? It claims to care, but if it cares, why is it doing so much harm? It claims to be expert at lie spotting and red flags. Why is there so much reckless hate and inauthenticity? Because there were quite a few channels who had the country singer on their channels as honored guests. In the real world, liars never prosper, but online, liars do, and liars have. And true crime doesn't hold them accountable, but instead celebrates them as popular heroes and entertainment. It's not right. In true crime, that liars make money by telling lies, especially not in a space that should be about truth. It's not so entertaining when you're an innocent teenager turned suspect. How do you think that feels if you're the parents of these teenagers? I hope in the aftermath to this case, the worst reckless speculators are identified and prosecuted. Because if they aren't, they will just go on to the next case and do it all again. Because it is a formula. It's a money-making formula. The same people that went after Amber Heard are now pursuing Angelina Jolie. There needs to be accountability online, just as there needs to be in the real world. True crime needs to be investigated and policed for its untrue crimes. If you agree, please share this video across your platforms. So I'm not going to take it further than that. I will be doing a live on uh, Vincent van Gogh, The Letters, and something that has happened in terms of a very famous Vincent van Gogh painting. We're going to talk about that and the idea of the greater good. Um, how is social media helping with a greater good or does it not know how to help? So we'll be examining that in the context of Van Gogh Letters number 31 later today. So look out for that.
Thank you for listening and I'll see you guys next time.